All right, deranged professor here, and I'm kind of doing a follow-up video for some issues I was having with my Masada, um, specifically this barrel here, with double feeds, jams, um, with my AEG, and also with using the um, Wolverine Inferno Gen 2. Um, I was stumped as to what was going on. Basically, what was happening was when I would shoot the gun uh, with the Inferno Gen 2, the, if I shot it too quickly on semi-auto, it would all of a sudden jam, the gun would lock up, and I'd be leaking air out the nozzle. Um, and the only way to correct it was to open the upper receiver and then close the upper receiver again, and then it would start shooting again. Very, very difficult um, gameplay. I actually took it out in the field and had to swap out to my... Uh, AEG lower and even with the AEG loader I was getting some misfeeds and double fires and uh, generally just it wasn't functioning very well. So I went to the Masada or the uh, HPA owners page for the Wolverine Airsoft and they there was a lot of people gave me a lot of really good hints. Um, basically I was using these BBs which are the Vulcan point threes and they are crap. Uh, they are they won't load a full 120 round mag. There's a lot of resistance when trying to load them in, um, and when you pull the feeder tube out of the top, it they just like barely trickle out. So someone told me you should switch BBs. That helped some, but was still getting the jam every, on every mag at least once, usually near the end of the mag. Um, so then someone said, you know, clean the gun, clean the mags, stretch the springs, did all of that. Everything seemed to do okay, but then every now and then I would get uh, one jam. So they said, you know, swap out buckings. And if you're a Masada owner, you know, I swear by the uh, Mad Bull Blue buckings. They are like pretty much what I have in almost every single Masada barrel that I own is a Mad Bull Blue. They've been my go-to bucking for the Masada ever since I've owned a Masada. So I switched out from a Mad, I put a brand new Mad Bull Blue in and still had the same issues. Changed out for a Maple Leaf 70 degree um, and that helped it some. Uh, I actually was able to get through about four mags on full auto fire with no issues at all. And then um, the very last BB on the very last mag jammed and caused that failure to fire. Um, with AEG, I didn't notice any problems, but with the, with the Inferno Gen 2, there were still some issues. So, I, I started doing some research, and I noticed on a few of the jams when I popped the upper receiver, basically the BB was lodged into the hop-up rubber, and the lower portion, I don't think I'll be able to do it here, but the lower portion of the rubber was rolled up, and it was jammed in the in the bucking with the lower portion of this rubber rolled under. Kind of like the nozzle, either the nozzle was sitting too low and revolved folding it, or the BB was sitting too low and when it tried to push in, it rolled it in. So I started doing some research and started really looking at the Masada. And the Masada, if anyone, if any of you guys know anything about the Masada, it has a very unique hop-up system. So the hop-up, basically, I like to say this is a they say it's a two-piece hop-up, but it's really like a three-piece hop-up for you M4 owners who have the feed tube and then the loading area with the hop-up wheel and the barrel all in one nice piece. We have it really in three pieces with the loading area here and then the trunnion for the barrel sits in this spot. Let me open that pin. Okay, so this and then here is the loading area with hop-up adjustment. And then your barrel with hop-up rubber goes into the front here and ratchets down nice and tight. So we almost we have pretty much like a three-piece system. And when I was watching, um, so I went on and started looking up like Bingo Airsoft and Advanced Airsoft and all their posts and stuff on troubleshooting a lot of different issues and um, was watching what they did with the M4 hop-ups. And so I started kind of following those principles. One, doing like the drop test. We're dropping it through the feeding um, nozzle to see if it would enter into the chamber easily. And I noticed that there was some difficulty. It would load fine, but it seemed like the BB was hitting something. So I took the hop-up chamber out or the trunnion with the loading area. And I took my barrel and I put it in. 
and ratchet it down. And then looking in this area here, you can see, you can barely, let me see if I can get the camera angle. You can see how there's that tiny little bit of red there. That is, this one, it only has that tiny amount because I actually shaved that down. There, now we got it straight on. I shaved that down using one of Bingo Airsoft's videos on how to do that. But beforehand, there were, the bucking was actually sticking through that area into the feeding tube, not enough to where it would pinch the BB in into the feeding lo uh, loading tube, but it would just let it not fully seat all the way in. So then when I would be shooting fast, it would catch on it, and the nozzle would kind of hit it. It would roll that bottom part of the bucking up and into it and jam, and then not allow the nozzle to fully seal, causing that leak and not letting the system reset. Now, this was most prevalent when I got near the end of a mag, where the BBs no longer are, have a full set of BBs to push all the way up in. You're all down to like those last three BBs that always drop out at the end. And the BB wouldn't, would catch and snag on that bucking and then wouldn't um, go in all the way for the nozzle to reset. So it was pretty much hindering the performance. Full auto on the gun was like, you couldn't even do it with the Gen 2. It, was, it would lock up all the time. So after trimming this one down to where it's here, like where there's nothing there, I have now pretty much gone through several mags, and I did it, I've been doing my tests with um, no BBs, actually, like only loading three or uh, four or five BBs into my magazine, firing it as fast as I possibly can, and I haven't had one single jam yet. So this has definitely helped. Now, if you're a Masada owner and you know about buckings, if you buy a bucking, they have to be trimmed for the Masada. Uh, this is the maple leaf, and a stock maple leaf is about the same length as this red one here, and I have trimmed down some of the rear of the bucking, uh, so that way when it goes on, it actually fits in snugly up to the shoulder of the, the bucking. Uh, with what, I'm, what I was experiencing, and it was with this barrel on the, on the trunnion for my gun, I also had to shave down the lips of the bucking also in order to get it to sit in there well uh, clear enough so that way the BBs would go down the feeding nozzle easily enough. So if you're experiencing some of these problems, and you can see here, if, if I get the barrel just right here, you can see kind of how short those lips are. Now they still make a good seal with the nozzle. I double checked that uh, while doing it. So I'm still getting the same FPS I was beforehand, but it is allowing the BB to enter all the way up into the chamber, even that last round, and then still be um, pushed in by the loading nozzle or the nozzle of the Inferno Gen 2 without causing any jams. I haven't had any jams or misfeeds yet. So basically changing out the BBs, the BBs that I was using, the bucking, and then also kind of doing some of those drop tests and things that they show on Bingo, Airsoft, and um, Advanced Airsoft, and other people out there that have posted. Those are just the main two that I, I kind of saw. Um, that has really kind of cleared things up. And then watching how Bingo shaves down the lips of the BBs, or lips of the bucking, if it's protruding into that feeding tube area. Uh, so hopefully that'll help some of you Masada guys out there. And if you have a Gen 2, I know I and there were a couple other guys that posted on there saying that they were having the same issues with their Gen 2 in their Masada. And they were saying that they just couldn't ever fire on full auto or really spam the trigger or else it would do the same thing at lock up. So I'm interested to see how this works out. I wonder if this might be the actual problem. I did notice on one of my new um, Mad Bull Blue Buckings, these are a couple of older barrels, and the bucking lips on these Mad Bull Blues do not protrude into the um, into this area like the like the new ones are doing. So I don't know if maybe Mad Bull changed the length of the bucking lips or something, and that's what's causing all the problem, or if um, it, I just got this barrel just maybe a little bit different in spec than the others, because I got so many barrels, I just throw one on. So. I'm going to try to keep a little bit better track of this, but maybe some of you guys out there who are having some problems, uh, check it out, try it out, see what you think, see if maybe you need to shave down these bucking lips just enough to clear this feed feeding ramp or feed um, 
chamber so that it, the BBs actually can seat in there all the way for the, the BB to be expelled and not cause any jams. So see what, see what you think. Uh, let me know what you think and um, we'd love to hear any feedback and see if this has helped anyone else out. But for right now, it's helped us out and we'll follow this up later on. I'll follow up later on and um, let you know if, if this has fully changed anything. So uh, for now, this is kind of part two of the uh, Inferno Gen 2 disorder on the Masada, kind of saying that maybe we fixed it and um, we will do a lot more testing and see how it goes. So for now, this is Deranged Professor signing out and I uh, hope to see you guys out there on the airsoft field.